What's up guys and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Real quick before questions, we have to send a thank you to Zachary Lingley, who is our newest Jedi Council member on Patreon. Thank you, Zachary. That is so huge and we appreciate your support so much. Also, today's video is brought to you by Audible, but we'll hear more about that later. Our first question comes from Miguel Perez, who asks if Star Wars could use more connectivity like the MCU, or would that make the universe feel smaller? I just think that Star Wars and the MCU are different beasts. I mean, the MCU is telling one continuous story over 22 films, and Star Wars doesn't do that. It has the luxury of kind of bouncing around the timelines and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the books and the comics are very interconnected, but the movies, I think that's just a little harder to do. Yeah, the, I mean, the MCU, ultimately, you get movies like The Avengers, where all of the same, all of the characters from all the different movies kind of come together and have a storyline together. You don't really get that in Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, they could do something like that, but I don't think that they will or have to i'm more interested like i i would not want them to do 22 films in the same like five to ten year period of time yeah like i've been ready for a while to move away from the skywalker saga yeah like once nine is done i'm i'm excited to see where they go next and to explore something completely different so yeah that's kind of what i like about star wars yeah and like just mcu characters in general they have like an origin story and then it's like okay well how do they connect to the bigger picture and you don't necessarily need that i think star wars has a lot more room wiggle room for like creativity mm. and that's not to say that they can't be interconnected or reference each other i mean i thought solo felt very marvel in that regard where they were pulling in legends stuff little just easter eggs and that kind of thing like i'm of course not against that at all i always think that's fun uh but as far as telling i guess one big story i don't think that they're gonna or need to do that yeah i mean again with the legends stuff i think we're gonna see a lot of tie-ins uh from not only legends but just little things uh in the mandalorian like yeah. ig88 and just callbacks to a lot of stuff so we'll still get some of that but not nearly as much as the mcu yeah and it is this weird different kind of universe where it's not just movies we're getting like everything is connected the tv shows and the comics and the books and the video games where marvel is more just the movies and a couple tv shows but even the tv shows don't really play into the mcu all that much at least as far as i don't we haven't really watched them so yeah I, i'm <laughs> not the expert there there's no time <laughs> Daniel Bowen wants to know if we want Kylo Ren to be redeemed in The Rise of Skywalker, or do we want him to stay with the dark side? Right now, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm fine either way. I am too. I Originally, I was like, no, he should probably stay bad and die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love the character, but I, I don't know. It just... The idea of his storyline coming together and redemption didn't make sense to me, but I don't know. Now, the more I think about it and like with Palpatine somehow coming back into the mix, it's, it's definitely possible. I'm, I think I'm on the fence too. Uh, I, I was the same way originally where I was like, he's been given two chances and he turned them down and that should probably be it. But what kind of changed my mind was watching Avatar The Last Airbender, <laughs> where there's a character that's very similar, uh, and he gets chance after chance to do the right thing, and every time he got another chance, I was, like, really invested in what he was going to do. And every movie, I would say, like, the climax, the most emotional part for me is when Kylo gets to make a choice, mm -hmm. whether or not to kill his father whether or not to kill Rey or Snoke. And it's like, well, what's he going to do? So I do think that episode nine is probably going to play out like that, where Kylo's going to get to make a choice and we're all going to be like, what's he going to do this time? <laughs> well, I mean, we've seen the conflict in him and he hasn't 
you know, gone to Anakin levels of slaughtering children and, you know, going on killing sprees like that, uh, unless something crazy happens in Nine. I mean, he was complicit in the destruction of Hosni and Prime, but, I mean, Vader was complicit in way more, I would say. Yeah. So, I he's... He's obviously still conflicted, but I do hope that we get some some really like angry emo <laughs> dark side Kylo in nine before he may or may not be redeemed. All right. <laughs> Cameron French asks if we could see evil Ewoks who have been corrupted by Palpatine's power on Endor. <laughs> I mean, I don't think so but i thought that was a funny idea and like if it is the second death star that's crashed on indoor and if it is haunted by palpatine or something i mean we've seen the dark side influence its surroundings before i think that's kind of an interesting idea i mean they're kind of a little bit evil already (laughs) to begin with they're already horrifying Uh, they're a little scary and they eat people um but you know they're willing to work with people if you feed them. So. Yeah. I bet, maybe. Probably not. But I think it's a funny idea. Yeah. It would be terrifying. <laughs> First name Nate wants to know why Yoda opposed Qui-Gon Jinn joining the Jedi Council in Master and Apprentice. My best guess is that maybe Yoda knew that that's not where he was needed. That he, The Force told him something that he had a destiny that was not part of the Jedi Council. And... He, he just opposed it. Yeah. I haven't finished the book yet, um, but I agree. And also, Yoda just, like, he's not down with anybody wanting to join the council as far as we've seen. Right? He, I mean, he he turned down Anakin and Qui-Gon. That's, that's all we know. He's just Lots like, of people come in and out of the council, and I assume they had his approval. He just gives everyone the stink eye. Maybe. Like... Maybe the last person he let on was Yaddle, and then <laughs> they had their little spat, and now he doesn't let anyone on. Yeah. I think, uh, I think Qui-Gon was, had too cool of a vibe, was too, like, much of a ladies' man, and Yoda was like, I don't know. He seems like a wild card. I mean, that is true. <laughs> so I'm sure that played into it as well. Jason Bobbery asks, how we're feeling about Boba Fett surviving the Sarlacc pit these days? I still think he's alive. I'm feeling pretty good about it after that the, that story of, uh, was it an aftermath? Uh-huh. Um, we know that at least his armor made it out of the Sarlacc pit, and I just yeah. don't see how the armor would have made it out without him. But I also don't know why he would have left the armor. Maybe he was like, I'm done with this. Or maybe... Maybe like, he couldn't get out with it on. Maybe his... Well, yeah, that that could be it. Maybe the Sarlacc latched onto the armor and he had to get out of it. Or maybe, like, his body dissolved in the Sarlacc. But it's supposed to take a thousand years. So that sounds like <laughs> yeah. probably not the case. Or it could have been a situation like Finn, where once he got out of there, he just started walking and took it apart piece by piece and just left it. It was in just the desert. too hot. It's too hot. But, but yeah, I think he's alive. Yeah, I that's like an interesting character that is good for them to kind of keep on the back burner and maybe put him in a story somewhere somehow. I mean, I agree with people when they say that it seems like John Favreau wanted to do a Boba Fett story and they were like, "Nope, you can't." And so he did someone else. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe they've got something planned for him or He's either for sure definitely dead or yeah, they have some kind of plan for him in the future. Sure. So like I said earlier, this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible is a leading provider of audio content and is a service I actually use because I go through a lot of Star Wars books and audiobooks in particular help me stay on top of my reading list. What I like the most about listening to the audiobooks for Star Wars is that they're very high quality with sound effects and music, so it's like listening to a movie. Just this week, Star Wars released its very first audio drama, Dooku Jedi Lost, 
all about why Count Dooku left the Jedi Order, and you can get it right now by visiting www.audible.com slash Star Wars Explained or by texting Star Wars Explained to 500, 500. If you sign up for a free 30-day trial today, you'll get a credit for one free audiobook of any price and credits for two Audible originals. Once you get an audiobook or audio drama, like if you get Dooku Jedi Lost, it will always be yours. You own that piece of content even if you cancel your membership. And if you get an audiobook you don't like, you can swap it out thanks to Audible's Great Listen Guarantee, which gives you up to a year to exchange an audiobook you didn't like for one you're excited to keep. That offer lasts for as long as you're a member. Dooku Jedi Lost is available right now if you want to give it a listen, and all the other canon novels have audiobooks as well. If you've been wanting to get into Star Wars books, this is the perfect and risk-free way to try. So visit www.audible.com slash Star Wars Explained or text Star Wars Explained to 500-500 and start your journey today. On to YouTube questions, Entertainment Theorist asks, When will see a new story about Thrawn and Ezra after Star Wars Rebels? I'm thinking that maybe Thrawn Treason could hint at it. It's supposed to take place, like, right before the end of Star Wars Rebels, and then maybe in the epilogue we could get some little tease. When does that come out? July, I think. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking we wouldn't get anything until maybe next year after, because we're getting a ton of stuff like at the end of this year um i don't think i'd expect anything substantial next year like i don't think dave filoni's i think dave filoni is going to handle that story yeah and i don't know i think we'd probably hear an announcement well in advance i mean i don't know if they would make like a a, a new animated show for that or if they would just continue the story on in books and comics yeah i don't know i feel like books and comics would be the way to go unless they were gonna unless they have like really big plans for thrawn and ezra i mean that's certainly a possibility and timothy zahn has said as much that he has an idea of what could happen but i feel like that'll be dave filoni's baby and if he were to do it it would probably be a show but yeah, and he's... He's busy. He's, he's a busy guy, yeah. He's doing Mandalorian. He's probably got a lot of stuff on his plate, so... But yeah, I think you're right. Probably something in that book. I, I could see just a little tease. A little taste. Nothing huge, but something. A little hint. Uh-huh. A little wink, wink, nudge, yeah. nudge. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> The Bleaker wants to know what Palpatine would have done if he had lost the election to be Supreme Chancellor in Episode 1. Probably would have just given up right then and there. Yeah, he seems like the guy to just be like, well, I'll just retire, I guess. I guess it's not my destiny after all. (laughs) I'm just going to go back to Naboo and live by a lake. (laughs) Um, I don't know what he would have done. I mean, I think he had it pretty much... In hand, he knew what was going on, and the whole reasoning behind the Trade Federation blockade was to generate sympathy for Naboo, Mm -hmm. so that then he could be in its place. But if it didn't happen, I'm sure he had a backup plan. Maybe he would have just gone straight to Order sixty six and kept Maul as his apprentice. I don't. He wouldn't have had that stuff in place. The clone. The clones weren't ready. That's true. I, I think. Maybe he would have finagled his way into being, like, vice chancellor or something. Yeah, he would have settled for something. Just get, get me something. He'll get something uh, in place of... He, he didn't win the election, but he still had enough sympathy to get, like, into power. And then he could have had the chancellor assassinated. Yeah. And then he would have risen to the rank. Yeah. And, yeah, probably that. And he, even still, like, before he was elected, he had a lot of, he, he did a lot of whispering in people's ears and, like, spreading rumors and stuff, just dropping bombs left and right. I think he just would have assassinated everyone that, <laughs> until he was the only senator left. <laughs> <laughs> Guess you have to elect me now. Yeah. That's what Snoke did. 
Droid walks into a bar, asks if Force users need to work out with the Force, or do they lose their skills if they don't use them often? This is a good question for Yoda, I guess, for, while he was on Dagobah. I, I but, think, in a sense, they have to... You gotta run, 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 jump. <laughs> As someone's backpack, though. As, yeah, I can be a backpack while you run. Uh, Yeah, I think that they had to, like, meditate to stay on top of things and it's more of a mental exercise but Mm -hmm. i think that yeah it's kind of a if you don't do it for a while you're probably going to fall out of practice i mean like if you don't use it you lose it yeah like taking improv lessons i had two weeks off because of celebration and then we didn't have class and then i came back and i felt rusty Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like a muscle you have to exercise, but it is something mentally that you need to kind of stay on top of. And in my mind, the force is a very mental thing. So, yeah, I I have to imagine that if you're slacking on your meditation, then you're not going to be as good at lifting rocks. Yeah, which is it's interesting now to think about Luke because he completely cut himself off of the force, like the force totally that's true and then he he comes back and he sees what's going on and he's like oh man i gotta do something and then he does this huge thing but then i i mean it kills him so (laughs) there you go that makes sense if you're if you don't work it out (laughs) it'll kill you you can't just go from not using it for a while to what luke did on crate i mean at a certain point i guess once you become an expert it's probably a little like riding a bike, but yeah, I like mean, you need to practice riding a bike when you're first learning it. Yeah, like Yoda lifting the X-wing out of the water. Like I'm yeah. sure he was meditating a lot on on Dagobah, but he wasn't lifting ships. Yeah, for fun. There weren't ships to lift. <laughs> he was living in the only ship that <laughs> was there, so he would just take the dragon snake in and out of the water just to bother it. Although if you're 900 years old, if you've been slacking for 20 years, it's not that big of a deal, like. <laughs> That's true. Brendan Nazar wants to know if we think we'll ever see a live action version of Mandalore or its capital in The Mandalorian. I could see that happening. I could see kind of, if we were to follow the same pattern as Star Wars Rebels or Resistance, like Maybe the Mandalorian is going to be a little more focused on specific locations and they'll see kind of, you know, how does this do on Disney Plus? How are people responding to it? And then next time we can get a little bigger with it and a little bigger and a little bigger. And yeah, maybe eventually they're back on Mandalore. I think that could be very possible. Yeah. Or, you know, it could be in something that it's not is not the Mandalorian, like a new show uh, maybe the Benioff and Weiss trilogy, like somewhere else. That makes sense too. If, down, if they were to the do line. the Mandalorian Wars, we could see Mandalore before it got all scorched and deserty. Yeah, that would be cool. Cree Silvera asks, what happened to Ahsoka's green lightsabers in the Clone Wars season seven? I don't know. <laughs> they don't. They don't talk about that in the book, do they? Well, like those are her same lightsaber hilts. Uh And in the Ahsoka book, she does talk about the Siege of Mandalore, and she's using her green lightsabers. So I think that, I mean, Anakin even says, like, they're good as new. I think he's handing her her lightsabers, but maybe he swapped out the crystals for some reason. I don't know. I have to assume Dave Filoni has a good reason, because it's already been established that they were supposed to be green. Future editions of the books can be changed so that they're now blue, but... I have to imagine he has a reason for changing the color of the blades, and I don't know what it is right now. Yeah, it it could be something like they needed to change a little bit of the the lore or history of kyber crystals and how they work in lightsabers, so that maybe that's already set up so that in episode nine, when the lightsaber's fixed it makes more sense i don't know i think it's probably more something like anakin just wanted to give her some sort of final bond with him because he's always had a blue lightsaber and Mm -hmm. so he's like here it's like a little piece of me or something i don't know what if she was like cool i mean i kind of liked my green ones but 
Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe it has something to do with the Jedi. Like if you leave the order, you leave your lightsaber with them and then they take the crystal out or something or but then like Dooku has his lightsaber when he leaves the order. So I don't know. There's got to be a reason I have to assume, but I don't know it. That's all the time we have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.